Greetings, I'm Tommy the Keyblade Master, and this month on my channel I'm doing a whole bunch of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reviews. What you see on screen is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time for the Arcade, and what can I say to you? It's a disappointment. The game's aged like milk. It's just a clunky button masher now. If you ask me, The Simpsons and The X-Men were much better games. Yes, this had some impressive animation for the time, but the gameplay just doesn't hold up. The stages are kind of lame. The controls are kind of awful. And the bosses themselves are just generic. Take a look at this. Your prehistoric boss battle is just a bunch of goo. This game just sucks. And somehow, and for some reason, Konami decided to port this game to the Super Nintendo. And I'm going to be reviewing that port today. And let me tell you... Shell shock. Anybody see that bus that hit me? At least a bus shunny it was me. There's no way I'm going to skin it in the corner and watch you talk smack about one of the best Super Nintendo games ever made. I wasn't going to talk smack. In fact, I was going to praise it. The Super Nintendo port actually turned out to be a really great game. Thanks to the fact that Konami always tweaked their arcade ports. And I wish you had allowed me to finish before you gave me the concussion. Oh, say, there's nothing wrong with a little concussion between friends. Me and you are not friends. Anyways, as old fart starts to head back into that corner there, let me tell you what I think of the Super Nintendo game. Konami was famous for tweaking their arcade ports to their home consoles to make them even better and to make them feel more like a game that was made for the home console. This is why I feel like the NES version of Contra has withstood the test of time. Better than even its original arcade port, despite the fact that it's a lot more primitive when it comes to the graphics. Turtles 4 is the same way. Although this time the drop in graphics is a lot less compared to the NES ports that Konami did. In fact, you'd be very hard pressed to notice these two clips I'm showing, one's from the arcade and one's from the Super Nintendo. As you can see, the arcade game did have a smoother animation and a better color palette than the Super Nintendo version. Overall, you have to be very, very nitpicky to even really notice or care. And what you get out of this is a better controls, more varied stages, slightly better plot and boss fights that are actually interesting. The story in Turtles of Time, like Turtles 2 and Turtles 3, is pretty simple, and for the most part, the plot is non-existent. I would say this is a little worse than Turtles 3, because at least in Turtles 3, you kind of had this over-branching arch in the way the areas were connected, so they made sense, and you had cutscenes that made sense. Here, not so much. You say Cowabunga at the end of the area, and then the next stage is displayed and you just jump in. Later in the game, they throw in a time-traveling aspect to help show and explain why all these stages are different. But for the most part, there's no real plot thread connecting anything. I would say the story in the Super Nintendo is better than the arcade version, mainly because the Super Nintendo has Shredder leading the turtles into the Technodrome to activate his time-traveling trap. While in the original arcade version, he just appears on the wall and somehow manages to zap you back in time. Anyways, the basic plot has the turtles at home watching April's newscasts when Krang swoops in and kidnaps the Statue of Liberty? Wait, he doesn't kidnap April? Major plot twist! Anyways, the turtles set out to find Shredder and get the statue back is the basic premise. Then the whole time travel aspect starts for the second half of the game once you get to the Technodrome. Pretty simple story, it doesn't really matter in the game overall. However, it's kind of fun and goofy and it's not bad. It does fit the Cheeseball 1980s cartoon series. Alright, I've already went into detail about the graphics and how good they are compared to the arcade version and how they're only a slight step down from it. Let's talk about a few features, though, that this game put in, just to show that Konami went the extra mile to make this home port as good as it could be. 
first thing they did is you're allowed to go into the options and switch it into a comic skin. This gives the turtles a slightly different look, like they were made from a comic book. The ones that you can tell the most would be Donatello, because his skin goes from green to a brown color, as you can see in this clip that I put up. And then finally, I have to talk about the Neon Knight Rider stage. And the original arcade game, this was just an automatic side-scrolling stage, similar to the skateboarding stage from Turtles 2. In this one, they threw in some Mode 7 and gave it a nice 3D effect, and it just looks gorgeous and it's fun to play. It's very memorable for a brawler, and I just think Konami was brilliant in doing this. The sound and music in this game is awesome. While they did cut out a number of the voice clips in the Turtles Arcade game to put it on the Super Nintendo, there's still a lot of them here. You'll hear it's pizza time, pizza time. or pizza power, or as well as the infamous Kawabunga, now sounding a lot better than it did in the NES game. So overall, these sound clips are pretty good, and the music is even more awesome. Take a listen. All of this will stick in your head. It's really great. Konami did a really good job composing this music. Now, everything I've stated so far in this review has been towards the arcade game compared to the Super Nintendo game. The graphics in the Super Nintendo game hold up okay against the arcade game. The sound and the music hold up okay against the arcade game. But here is where the Super Nintendo game just swoops in and kicks the arcade game's butt. It has way better gameplay. Now let's start off with what is the most improved aspect of this game compared to the arcades, and that is the controls. Now the arcade version wasn't really a terrible control-wise game, it just was button mashy. And all these special moves like throwing the enemies at the TV screen were done automatically. You had no control over them. In fact, I would even say they took you out of the gameplay rather than being really cool moves that you could pull off. This has changed in the Super Nintendo port. Instead, you have to press Y and either towards the enemy or away from the enemy at the right time while you were doing a combo to pick them up and throw them or do slam them on the ground. It's tricky to get your head around these new moves and it takes practice. However, it's well worth it. Not only does it feel good doing this, but it gives you more points. 200 points gives you a 1-up similar to the NES version. However, since you now have these new moves that will increase your score, you can now get one ups easier if you use these moves strategically. If better controls weren't enough to make this game better, Konami did one thing else. They turned these two vertically scrolling stages that were okay in the arcade game and turned them into fun as heck mini games that you now play through. You only have to hit each enemy once to kill them. There's plenty of pizzas to pick up. And at the end of it, you'll get bonus points depending on how well you do in these two stages. The sewer surfing stage and the Neon Knight Rider stages have gotten a huge increase in the fun factor due to this change. If bonus stages weren't enough, how about new bosses? They even sweetened the deal with that. In the original arcade game, the end of stage 3, you just fought a bunch of pizza monsters and then Shredder appeared. Here, it's an actual boss fight against the Rat King, and he's pretty fun. In the prehistoric Turtlesaurus stage, as I've already mentioned, you fight a bunch of goo. In this one, it's Slash, and he's a really fun boss. He can block your attacks, and you have to find a way to strike him in the back or strike him when he's open. They've also changed Toka and Razor's position from being in the end of the pirate stage to being in the Technodrome, and they're really fun. They've changed the way they attack as well, and they included an extra battle with Shredder, which is really cool. In order to beat this guy, you have to pick up foot soldiers and slam them against the TV screen. They changed the controls around to where it's really easy to do. You don't have to be as precise in the timing with this boss as you do in the rest of the game. Still, he's a really fun boss. I should also make a point to mention that unlike the original arcade game, 
Rocksteady and Bebop make an appearance in the Super Nintendo version, and they're okay. I personally preferred their Turtles 2 or Turtles 3 incarnations over this battle, but it's better than the Toka and Razar battle we got at this point in the arcade game. And then finally, we also have a fight against Super Shredder, similar to Turtles 3. He transforms at the very end, and his combat's actually better than the um, regular incarnation of the Shredder that we got in the arcade version. He pretty much teleports around, and then he'll either throw out fire on the ground, throw ice in the air, or he'll throw out an Adolkin type move that can shrink your turtle. On the very challenging last mode that you can equip in the option menu, this guy can be tough. But he is fair, unlike the arcade version, which just feels, again, like a button masher, and it's more luck than skill. If you still don't like that, there's even more. There's now an options mode right on the main menu, no secret code this time, that allows you to increase your challenge, your amount of lives, and so on. And the way you set the challenge really does affect the game. It's all in balance. Check out this clip here. Here is normal mode versus Shredder's tank, and here is challenge mode. In challenge mode, Mikey has to deal with the foot soldiers that can block your attack and are much harder to throw because of it. And finally, there are two other modes for you to try. These are kind of forgettable, but they're not bad, at least on paper. First is the time trial mode. There is no battery pack in this game, so it deletes itself after you turn it off. But if you have a friend and you just want to see how quickly you can mash through a bunch of enemies, it's not a bad mode to go to. And finally, there's a versus mode where you pick two turtles and you fight it out in front of Splinter. Again, it's not a bad idea on paper, but Street Fighter 2, this is not. Unfortunately, because I could not find anyone who would play this against me, I do not have any footage of versus. But take my word for it, it's not very fun. Don't subject your friend to the versus mode in this game. Two-player co-op mode through the arcade game is pretty fun, but don't do versus. It's a waste of time. At any rate, Turtles 4, Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo, is definitely worth seeking out if you have a console that can play Super Nintendo games. I do want to warn you, don't buy anything that says it has a port of the arcade game. A direct port is kind of boring. It hasn't aged well, and the Super Nintendo version is just so much better. You know, you know something that we suck, son? What? If you know your company got a hold of a license to make new Ninja Turtles games, but they could not convince Konami here to let them port the Ninja Turtles 4 to them new fingered console, so they decided to redo the whole plastic thing. But rather than focus on the Super Nintendo game you just reviewed, they went toward the arcade game. And to make matters worse, let's say they tried to do it with the four kids Ninja Turtles, which is completely opposite in tone of the classic series. Well, if a game like that was made, I'm pretty sure it would be considered a disaster among all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan and be universally panned. But the only way I think I would have to review a game that awful is if I was stuck in some sort of strange pocket universe. I don't think that will ever happen. Whoa! This isn't, it can't be, no!